I hate giving talks, so what I did was I actually made my talk in the form of prompts to me and also Dolly photos. So I asked Dolly for a picture of Esther Dyson from Adventure, and believe it or not, that's what showed up. So she has blue eyes, but anyway. This talk is partly about the excitement and, and a little historical perspective, but also maybe a sober look at what's going to happen. You know, what is the magic here? It's fundamentally amazing algorithms and amazing AI. We started with if this, then that, and that looked really interesting. We called it artificial intelligence, and we called it expert systems, and then the doctors didn't like the notion of being replaced, so we called it automated assistance instead of expert systems. And over the years, whatever we don't quite understand, we call it AI. Once we really understand it, we call it neural nets or something. Now, even with neural nets, we don't quite understand what it's producing, chat GPT, but that's sort of the way it goes. So what's the business model? Interesting, you look at Dolly. I asked it for a quadrant chart. That's the thing on the left. I really didn't get what was going on. On the other hand, CB Insights does get business models and domains and so forth, and this is a really interesting chart. It kind of shows how the big AI companies are indeed going to be platforms, and then they're going to be surrounded with not so much applications as expertise domains, if you like. Sales messages, customer support messages, uh, all kinds of things, and that's... I think, you know, look at Oracle, look at Salesforce, they start out as sort of generalists, and then the real value is in applying that general technology to lots of interesting specific problems. What about education? Is everything upended because we can no longer ask students to write essays and, and grade them appropriately? I started my career as a reporter and fact checker, and I think that's the best training you could give anybody for almost anything. And so, yeah, it's going to take more work for teachers one-on-one -on -one to help the students ask good questions and then validate the answers. Again, if ChatGPT takes a lot of jobs, there'll be a lot of room for more teachers. And I think human beings teaching human beings is still the best model. What else? I also think one of the great promises of all of this is that we will maybe think not just about training AIs, but training babies. And again, if a lot of jobs are taken by AIs, we will be able to find more and pay more for doulas, childcare workers, teachers, coaches, people that can train people to be humans. And parallel with everything going on in AI, we've had COVID-19 and we've had a vision of what it looks like when children aren't well trained, when they and their parents are on Zoom and on the phone and rising anxiety. And I, I just think maybe AI will help us to understand better what it is to be human and to train people to be good humans. But surely there must be dangers. Oh, and this prompt says a picture of people basically coming inside with signs saying, just for you. That, to me, is one of the big dangers of all this stuff. Just spam misinformation, incredibly well-targeted. And that enables a business model that, as a tech person, I've invested in several times and lost money, which is sender pays, recipient charges email. Because the, the financial dynamics where someone from outside can impose upon me a job of looking at their email and deciding whether it's worth it. You know, it's like, can they put stuff on my to-do list? They do, I get 500 of them every day. And defense is going to be finally that new business model. However, that is not the only danger. And while I think there is a defense for spam and things like that, I see also there's no defense against people talking too long. <laughs> I think this is a really serious problem. This. AI is an incredibly powerful tool. AI is not evil. All it wants, it's a computer is hungry for electricity and storage space. It's not trying to do evil, but people can use it for evil. The only solution I can think of now is not regulation, but legislation of the form 
whoever is behind the damage is liable. And that's where these big platforms come into use because we can require them to think about what they could be sued for and to be just as intelligent as the people misusing their systems. And they need to do good supply chain analysis. You know, who's using my thing to do what? But I think we really need to be careful. We totally missed the possibility of addiction and, and that desire to keep using stuff that Facebook and TikTok and everybody else is enabling. So my last prompt is not the end. Thank you very much. Thank you.